What's going on, guys? This is Barker talking about the NBA as usual. I'm going to be talking about the NBA trade deadline. It just happened. It finished at 3 p.m. today if I upload it the day of the trade deadline. But there were a lot of trades, but there's been a lot better trade deadlines than this one. And I'm going to be talking about the top 10 because honestly, in my opinion, there were really only 10 amazing trades that are worth even like noting and talking about. So I'm going to go from craziest trade to 10th craziest trade. So obviously, number one, if you looked at all the trades, is the trade the Bulls pulled off with the Orlando Magic, which they pulled off multiple with the Magic. Actually, maybe they didn't, but... Nikola Vucevic and Al Farika Minu, if I said that correctly, to the Bulls. And then in return, the Bulls sent the Magic Wendell Carter Jr., Otto Porter Jr., which Wendell Carter Jr. has had a really bad season defensively and honestly offensively. He's had a really bad season this year. And 2021 and 2023 first round picks from the Bulls to the Magic. So obviously the Bulls won this trade. They have an all star to pair with Zach Levine, and they have a center who can play defense. Because I swear, every time I see the Bulls lose, the Bulls give up a ton of points in the paint. Like, I swear it was yesterday, I'm pretty sure. Jared Allen uh, scored like 19 points, 9 rebounds, like 3 blocks against the Bulls and beat them. So, this was long overdue for the Bulls. They needed a guy who could protect the paint. And not only that, they needed a guy who could space the floor better and just be a consistent offensive threat. And it's been so long since Zach Levine has had a star player next to him. It's been since the Timberwolves when he had Carl Anthony Towns next to him. So now that he's a superstar and two all-stars on the Bulls, the Bulls are looking like a playoff team, especially with the other trades I'm going to be talking about. Number two, Miami got Victor Oladipo, and they gave the Rockets Avery Bradley, Kelly Olenek, and a draft swap. Like, are you kidding me? They gave up nothing at all for Victor Oladipo. Like, that is... That's penny. That's penny change they gave up for Victor Oladipo. A 20-point-per-game scorer. That is one of the biggest steals. Like, obviously, you know, this is the last year of his deal. So you only get half of Victor Oladipo if you can't re-sign him. But he went to Miami. Once you go to Miami, you can't not re-sign with them. You know, there's no state income tax. It's beautiful. You live in Miami. The fans are amazing. The team's good. How can he say no? And they're based a lot on shooting and defense, a.k.a. what Victor Oladipo does. Perfect fit. Perfect trade. Miami always pulling off crazy trades at the trade deadline. Number three is the Trailblazers. They got Norman Powell, and they gave the Raptors Gary Trent and Rodney Hood. So, Gary Trent is a good, young, up-and-coming player, but Norman Powell is a way better, young, up-and-coming player, especially if the Trailblazers can re-sign him. Now, this is a risky trade, because the Trailblazers need to be able to re-sign Norman Powell, or they just sent away Gary Trent, one of their best, young, rising stars, and Rodney Hood, who's a decent bench player when he's healthy. So, it, it's a risky trade, but the reward over the risk is just too high for it not to be number three like Norman Powell is a monster and pairing alongside that offensive ability with CJ McCollum and Damian Lillard it's just monstrous like the Trailblazers are gonna be nice nice with Norman Powell just let just let me say it's gonna be nice number four I got the Denver Nuggets acquiring Aaron Gordon and Gary Clark and The Magic got Gary Harris, RJ Hampton, and a protected 2025 first-round pick. So, obviously, Aaron... Oh, my God. Cats, really? I really hope they don't try to kill each other while I'm talking. But Aaron Gordon is obviously a solid, small four, and amazing three. Uh, He's been inconsistent for the Magic. Cats, can you not right now? (laughs) Aaron Gordon has been inconsistent shooting-wise and just offensive ability. But everyone knows what he can do, what his potential is, and the change of scenery and the fast-paced offense from the Nuggets can really make him thrive alongside people like Jamal Murray and the playmaking of Nikola Jokic. And plus, Gary Clark is a solid bench player 
that they can put alongside their pieces, like P.J. Dozier and etc. Uh, obviously, the Magic got R.J. Hampton, which he's a rookie this year, so we don't know his potential. Gary Harris is just good at defense. That's all I can really say about the guy. And a protected 2025 first-round pick, I'm not sure how protected it is, but it's protected, and they gave up Aaron Gordon and Gary Clark and got not much in return. Honestly, the, the Nuggets won that trade so hard. And the other ones, in my opinion, were pretty even for the most part. For the most part. Number five, I got the Celtics acquiring Evan Fournier from the Magic, and all they gave up was two second-round picks. So... If you looked at this trade deadline, the Magic have just been... Oh, their whole team is destroyed right now. They blew it up just like the Pistons did when Andre Drummond and Blake Griffin weren't working together. And they weren't going to make the playoffs. That's exactly what the Orlando Magic are doing. They're realizing that they're an 8 seed at best every year. So blow it up and have young guys like Jonathan Isaac and Markel Fultz be the main guys. And I love it. I love that they're doing it. They're just not getting that much in return in my opinion but you know you got to start somewhere and obviously Evan Fournier on the Celtics as a bench shooting guard that is amazing for them much needed offense much needed shooting for the Celtics number six I got the Clippers acquiring Rajon Rondo and they gave up to the Hawks Lemon Pepper Lou and two future second round picks now I love this trade not because of Rondo going to the Clippers but Lemon Pepper Lou going to Atlanta where he went to that strip club and said he went there for the wings. And then that whole Lemon Pepper meme went on and all that. And Jack Harlow leaked he wasn't wearing a mask at the strip club. It, it was bad. It was really, really bad, but it was a funny situation. But obviously the Clippers getting Rajon Rondo. We know what that man can do in the playoffs, even though in the regular season he's not that much of an excellent talent in the regular season. He's kind of like LeBron. He holds back. He puts up good stats, but in the playoffs, it's a different player. And the Hawks get Lemon Pepper Lou, who can put up consistent scoring for the Hawks off the bench. And honestly, he's an underrated defender. Plus two second round picks. Amazing trade both ways. Seven, I got Washington getting Daniel Gafford and Chandler Hutchinson. And they gave to the Bulls Troy Brown Jr., and Mo Wagner. So, this was an amazing trade both sides. Washington gets much-needed defense from Daniel Gafford and Chandler Hudsonson, and the Bulls get a two young talents who can shoot that are, obviously, Mo Wagner is a center who can shoot the three well. Daniel Gafford can't shoot at all, and it kind of looks like the Bulls are going for more shooting. Obviously, they acquired Nikola Vucevic, And now they have Troy Brown Jr. and Mo Wagner, who can also shoot the ball. It looks like they're definitely going for a fast-paced three-point shooting team, by the looks of it, in my opinion. But that's not all the Bulls did. They then flipped Mo Wagner to the Celtics. This is number eight. And in return, required Daniel Tice. Now, the Bulls have easily won the trade deadline. They got so upgraded. Okay, sorry about that. My phone, I mean, my camera ran out of storage. So I'm assuming this is going to be a decently smooth transition. But hopefully, I was talking about uh, the Bulls flipping Mo Wagner to the Celtics and in return acquiring Daniel Tice. Daniel Tice is a solid veteran for the Bulls. I don't honestly know why the Celtics would do this except for the fact that Mo Wagner can shoot the three better. So maybe they're just looking for better spacing on their team because Tristan Thompson and Daniel Tice together don't work. That might be it. I don't think the Celtics... The Celtics should have done more. The Evan Fournier trade was good, but the Mo Wagner trade is just eh. It's not really that good for them. Coming in at number nine, it's a three-team trade. So keep with me here. Philly got George Hill and Iggy Brastakis, which is just a G League player for them, but George Hill is a solid pickup. OKC gets Tony Bradley, Austin Rivers, and two future second round picks from Philly, and then the Knicks get Terrence Ferguson. So, obviously Philly won this. They got George Hill. They got a solid veteran point guard that can lead them in the playoffs. Uh, OKC got a good young player in Tony Bradley and two second round picks, and then the Knicks get a decent 
defensive wing and Terrence Ferguson. So it's kind of a win-win for all three, in my opinion. So there's not much to say there. Just, you know, George Hill going to Philly. It was a good trade. And they really didn't give up much. And then the last trade is number 10. The Mavericks got J.J. Redick and Nikola Melli. And they gave the Pelicans James Johnson and Wesley Awundu. I think I said his last name right. Awundu. <laughs> it's, it's a hard name to say. But J.J. Redick kind of provides that role that Seth Curry provided for the team last season. Shoots threes and makes the nece- necessary plays. And then Nikola Melli is just a stretch big who can be decent on the Mavericks offense since they shoot a lot on that team. And they haven't been making them this season. And then the Pelicans, they got nothing from this. I don't know why they did this. Besides to get off JJ's contract, I don't know why they did this at all. James Johnson doesn't help them. And Wesley Awundu is just eh. He's a G League player, to be honest. No offense to him. Obviously, he could beat my ass in basketball, but he's not a rotational player for them at all. So, those are the top 10 trades of the deadline. The rest were just kind of eh. Like, I don't need to talk about DeLon Wright getting traded for second-round picks and Corey Joseph. You know, it's just pointless. You know what I mean? Like, if you really want to know every gritty, ditty detail, you know, look at Woj on Twitter. He tweets everything and shams. If you look at their Twitter, you will see every single trade detailed, yada, yada, of every single team. Not going to lie, I'm a little disappointed from the Pistons. A very quiet trade deadline. But overall, a decent trade deadline. Like, suspense and trades, yada, yada. Let me know what you guys thought about the trade deadline. Let me know what you guys thought about the video. Like it if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. I always talk about basketball. It's like all I do. Peace.